This video will save your life if you would ever be in a situation like this. You have to cross a bridge and you don't know if a train is coming or not. So what do you do? First of all, I'm not a biologist, but I'm pretty sure that your ears aren't on your hands. But you can actually hear the train coming from very far away if you put your ears on the tracks. It do works and it is extremely effective. But do you know why? Take a second to wonder. Okay, I have to warn you, almost everyone get this wrong. So what is happening? Sound is actually just a pressure wave, a disturbance that's kinda pushing to its neighboring atoms to propagate this disturbance wave. As the train is touching the tracks, it's sending a pressure wave down the rail. Now here is why most get it wrong. Sound travels faster than solids, slower in liquid and slowest in gas. This is because solids is much more dense. There are many more molecules in solids. There is less molecules in liquids and there's even fewer molecules in gases. We can represent a sound wave propagating with dominoes. Because the molecules slash dominoes are very close together, they can collide quickly and therefore the wave travels faster. For example, in air, the pressure wave is 343 meters per second. That's the speed of sound. But in water, it's actually 1,482 meters per second. And in steel, it's almost 6,000 meters per second. So in our setup, the sound wave would arrive much sooner in the tracks than in the air, because a pressure wave in steel moves 17 times faster than air. But that's not why listening to the tracks is effective. Well, even the best high-speed trains only travel around 70 meters per second. And you can see here the speed of sound is much much faster than the train. And so it doesn't matter that the sound is traveling even faster in the steel tracks. Sound is fast enough in air. So why can you detect the train on the railway tracks? The correct answer has to do with dimensions. A speaker produces sound that propagates in three dimensions, like a sphere. And so the intensity drops according to the area getting bigger. In 3D, the area gets four times bigger when the distance gets double. As you can see here, the intensity is just like 1 over r squared. That's called the inverse square law, which you may recognize from the equation of gravity. In two dimension, like a rock being thrown into a lake, the wave intensity only drops by 1 over r. Not as crazy though. But in one dimension, like the railway tracks, the intensity never drops. That's the reason why fiber optics works, by the way. The area which the intensity should be distributed around never grows with the distance. That is why you can spot a train from far away. The only thing stopping the sound wave in the railway tracks are dampening, such as absorption of the wave or friction, like this pendulum here. One pendulum is in vacuum. Another one are covered with air molecules, causing friction and causes the pendulum to stop. The sound waves in the air just dissipates because it's being distributed in three dimension, causing the intensity to drop very fast. But you can detect the wave in the railway tracks from miles away. Because it's only dampening that's stopping the wave, it does not matter at all that sound in steel is way faster than sound in air. Sound in air is still much, 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 much faster than the train. But don't ever cross a bridge where a train is coming, so these kids should have gone away or at least listening to the railway tracks, or just hide here or hang here when the train is coming. That's it, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing or joining on Patreon to support the creation of hopefully many more animated physics videos.